All right, David Lobel, thank you for joining me here. So you are a professor in Earth System Science at Stanford, and um, it says here um, you were just elected to the National Academy of Sciences. Is that right? That's correct. That sounds made up. Is that really existing? <laughs> Okay, I think it does exist. Um, anyway, I read on Twitter that uh, CO2 is plant food. So please tell me how excited you are about all the coal we're burning and how, how much more coal we should burn. <laughs> yeah, this has been a line uh, for about 30 or 40 years that, that CO2 is good and therefore we shouldn't worry about it. Um, it's, it's, very, it's part of the story. So it's true that CO2 does help many plants grow. Um, but it's also true that you can't separate the CO2 from all the things that come along with it. So if we could only increase CO2 and do nothing else, it would be good. But we know the changes that come with CO2 are bad enough that they outweigh the positives of CO2. Simple as that. So like, what are some of those changes that, that outweigh the benefits? Well, the obvious ones are you get higher temperatures. Um, you often get changes in humidity. And, and shifts in rainfall that are important. So people have studied this, you know, just as much of this as they've studied whether solar cycles could cause the, uh, the fluctuations in temperatures that we see. You know, these are the theories that keep coming up. People have studied it forever. It depends where you are in the world. In some places, those CO2 benefits will be enough to counteract any of the negatives, but that tends to be pretty high latitudes. So if you're looking at the US or, most of Europe or certainly the tropics, those CO2 benefits just don't outweigh the negatives. The other thing to for, for the um, those really interested in the details is that the main crop we go, the, the most produced crop in the world is corn and corn doesn't benefit nearly as much from high CO2 because it already has a photosynthetic pathway that's concentrating CO2 around the site of photosynthesis. And so because it has invested all of that energy into doing that, evolutionarily, uh, it doesn't really benefit as much from the CO2 going up. So are you worried about the climate impacts on agriculture? Yes, I think the evidence is very clear that that on net, um, the changes going on in the atmosphere, including all the climate changes, are a risk to a lot of major production systems and to a lot of food insecure areas. So there's definitely a, a reason that we that we work on, uh, continue to work on how to adapt to these changes. All right, well, it's, thanks, not, it's not just all the money we get paid and, and all of the uh, conspiracies that uh, are out there. If only that was true, but we're, I don't think we're capable of uh, conspiracies. Well, thanks, David. This has been really great. <laughs> thanks, Andy. <laughs>